Inbound logistics companies in the United States have found a really good use case for electric trucks. Sales for hydrogen and battery electric trucks have grown steadily, although below forecasts for the full year 2023, in an optimistic shift towards this newer and cleaner transition for electrification. Cartage and drayage specialists at Coyote Container, for example, successfully completed a 400-mile delivery run in a Nikola Trace semi-truck powered by hydrogen fuel cells. The 400-mile route took the truck through a 17.7-ton trailer and the California Altamont Pass and Grapevine Canyons, which obviously are some of the more challenging sides of the state. Coyote Container's Nikola Trey was one of 35 hydrogen trucks the company delivered in the fourth quarter of 2023, and this 400-mile trip completed with the help of first element fuel to resupply the hydrogen tanks was certainly one of the very first of such in the industry. And this right here, folks, underscores an extremely important aspect of this transition, which is the fact that by integrating electric powertrains into inbound logistics networks across North America, you can not only reduce your environmental impact and contribute to a sustainable future, but you can save a lot on costs and driver retention which just goes beyond manufacturing and development. And as it turns out, in contrast to the consensus opinion on Wall Street and even the general trucking industry, hydrogen is no longer a science project. In the entire year of 2023, there were around 355 HVIP voucher requests from Nikola Corporation. This is an incentive program in California where companies can apply for a grant and a discount on the truck cost of these clean and zero emission vehicles, which Nikola happens to be one of the very first ones to offer. And the story gets even more interesting when you look at just battery electric requests for these incentives, with a broad mix of companies like Freightliner, Volvo, BYD, as well as Peterbilt entering the mix with their own product lineups. Now, although this total of just around 300 trucks for the full year seems certainly very impressive, Daimler, for example, sold 71,000 total Class A trucks in the year 2020. So the amount of penetration we're seeing, although significant, is still a very small percentage of the work that needs to be done to truly offset diesel and natural gas trucks, which in my opinion shows just how much innovation and opportunity is still left in the tank. And as it turns out, translating that opportunity into real sales is going to be a difficult hurdle. Costs of electric trucks are going to be high for the consumer because it's very expensive to manufacture them, not to mention the fact that the overhead for startups like Nikola have to be spread out over a significantly lower volume of sales, which obviously hurts their bottom line profitability. And although the headlines look scary with a billion dollar net loss and negative cash flow for Nikola Motors in the full year 2023, the situation is getting a lot better. As the company significantly cut down on R&D expenses and narrowed its net loss to just around $150 million, up from around 300 the same quarter in 2022. And what's more is the fact that according to Nikola, Dealers right now are packed to the brim with orders for every vehicle that they have on the lot. Unlike in the auto industry, which has so much variety and so many options and consumers, the Class 8 commercial business is a lot trickier to forecast. And since a business like Nikola Motors is going to be selling directly to dealers who then sell to their end users and provide all the services as well as the financing options that are needed to purchase such an expensive vehicle, sales figures are at the end of the day going to be dependent heavily on how dealers adapt to this new novice industry. How well do these companies manage their accounts? How do they register the trucks? As well as how do they market it and provide the services to end users? who would like to buy these vehicles, in many cases, in bulk. As for infrastructure, hydrogen stations are slowly but surely coming online in extremely pro-green states like California. The company just launched its very first one in Ontario, California, which is meant to help those companies that are early adopters in that same state refuel their trucks on busy corridors that go from west to the east. 
A 20-minute refueling time is nothing to laugh about in an industry that is struggling to even gain traction with megawatt-scale charging for batteries. Hydrogen and lithium-ion are going to be co-solutions for this transition, as one solution is obviously not going to fit all applications. And that is exactly what's going to help drive adoption faster than ever before, even though right now economic turbulence is slowing down the curve significantly. Interest rates are still at their highest level in more than 20 years, with the Federal Reserve expecting to stabilize it or cut it over the next 12 to 18 months. At the end of the day, that is really what's going to drive and catalyze the industry a lot more, because right now, companies are cutting back a lot more than they're investing. But that shouldn't dismay people from understanding the advantages of the electric truck. But as usual, folks, let me know your thoughts on the situation down in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.